Jerry, how did you get started making guitars? Well, I played the resonator guitar for a long time and I had a, a cheaper model that I did not like the sound of and I couldn't afford to buy the one that I wanted. So I thought if the guy that built that one can do it, I can do it. So I just started bending wood and building them and I made a lot of kindling for the fireplace in the beginning. <laughs> And so resonator, you have to explain what that is. Uh, um, is it a nice guitar? Or? A resonator guitar is played like a steel guitar, but it's an acoustic version. And it has like an aluminum speaker cone inside of it that vibrates, which actually makes the sound of the guitar. It's used a lot in blues music and country, old, older country and bluegrass music. Resonator, resonating sound. Yes. The, what they call the resonator is this speaker cone and it has what they call a spider bridge on top of it which the strings actually vibrate the spider bridge which is a cast aluminum looks like a spider web that sits on top of the cone and it vibrates the speaker cone which is actually what makes the sound of the guitar okay and so how did you get started playing music my dad played the guitar and had a country band here in this area when I was a kid and he got me started playing the guitar and he drug me away from rock music into the country world so I played in a band with him and a few other guys from town here for quite a few years. All right so let's start with the name uh, your dad's name and the name of the band. My dad's name was Jerry Pitt. He's passed away now. And the name of the band was the City Limits Band. And country. And country band, yes. And so there's some people here that are listening now that think, oh, I remember that. That was so much fun. Oh, yeah. It was a good time for me. I was just like 13, 14 years old. So I got to experience a lot of things playing music in different places that most kids my age did not get to experience. I presume bars and honky-tonks. Bars and honky-tonks, and it didn't make mom very happy either. <laughs> uh, and so did your dad teach you? Yes. My dad and a gentleman named Red Folsom, actually his name was Frank Folsom that lived here in town, worked at the VA. He, he taught me a lot about the guitar, yeah. All right, but no school? Moving? No. My dad sent me and my brother when we were kids to lessons to learn to play the steel guitar. And in about two years, the only thing I learned how to play was the theme for Batman. So he didn't want to spend <laughs> his money on that. <laughs> All right. So you saw this guitar and you, and you, you were born tinkerer. Exactly. Okay. So you got, you look at it. Well, first, you had to learn to play it, right, to fully appreciate it. Right. Okay, and then you thought, I'm going to make me one of these. I did, and I had a lot of help from a gentleman here in town. Is um, Marv Bassett, who used to have Bassett's um, Wrecker and Towing Service here in town years ago. He made mandolins, and he taught me how to bend the wood and uh, how to put things together and brace them up to make them the best sound that you could get. And the very first the very first resonator guitar that I built, I took it and showed Marv and he kind of chuckled and he said, I'll give you a quarter for it. <laughs> <laughs> he was a great guy. You just don't go to the lumber yard to get the wood though. No, yeah. there's um, supply places throughout the country and normally I get mine from a place in St. Louis, but they sell specifically what's called tone wood for musical instruments. Tone wood? Yes. Wood that'll have a good tone. Right, exactly. Or hopefully it'll have a good tone. Uh -huh. So just take us through the steps. What's the, the first, I presume first, you have to have a design somewhere. Uh, do you draw it? Yeah, I have templates drawn out and cut out that I've drawn out or actually had people send me templates for specific dimensions that they wanted. And if they work out really good, then I keep the template and we'll use it over and over. And then 
once I choose the wood that I want to work with or someone else chooses the wood that they want, then I get it and I run it through a thickness sander just like a cabinet builder until I get it to the right thickness and then start cutting things out and gluing it all together and that the the hardest part of it or the most time consuming part of the whole process is the finishing process because normally they get like 20 coats of clear lacquer and it's sanded down to 3000 grit sandpaper about every third or fourth coat and do you sand by hand or yes you? It's all sanded by hand. So you say different kinds of woods. What I presume that the structural elements are different than the... The, the density and the porosity of the, the woods are different, and that makes a very big difference in the sound of the guitar. A lot of people like guitars made out of rosewood for the sides of the guitar and the back, and then they like spruce for the top because the... On a regular guitar, the top vibrating is what actually makes the sound. And that sound bounces around inside of the guitar and then comes out of what they call the sound hole, which is the hole you see in the front of an acoustic guitar. The rosewood is much harder and more dense, so the sound, the vibrations bounce off of it instead of being absorbed in it. And that's normally what people like in a regular acoustic guitar is either rosewood or mahogany. And do they sound different? They do. Uh, the rosewood it makes a much brighter sounding guitar and the mahogany the mahogany makes a more mellow sounding guitar and the the bass sounds of the guitar come out more prominent than the higher notes. So a personal preference? It is very personal preference, yes. What's the surface called? What's the name for that? The, the part we see, the beautiful the, part. The, of the, the top of the guitar, yeah. we call that the top. Just the yeah. top, okay. Yeah. And that's not veneer, is it? It can be. That, um, that changes the, the sound of the guitar a lot. A lot of uh, cheaper guitars, less expensive guitars, are built with a veneer top. Yeah, or and veneer back and sides. The higher higher end instruments are all made out of solid wood. I presume every guitar sounds different. Every guitar sounds different. Even if you build them as close to exactly the same as you can, even if you make them out of wood from the same tree, they'll sound different. And do they all sound good, or do you say, wow, that sounds terrible, I'm going to have to, that's firewood? Sometimes I say that sounds terrible. I usually don't use it for firewood right away, because somebody will like it just because of personal preference. Do you ever um, say, wow, that is a beautiful sound coming from this guitar? I have said that. I have built myself... Since I play the resonator guitar mostly, I've built myself five different resonator guitars, and every last one of them sounded amazing to me. And I think the longest I've ever actually kept one for myself was two weeks before somebody else heard it and wanted to buy it. Really? And so, who's your clientele? Anybody and everybody. I have shipped guitars to Canada and the United Kingdom. I have resonator guitars that have been played on the Grand Ole Opry stage and played by professional recording guitar players clear down to farmers that just want to play on their back porch. So what did it, did you were you there when the one was played on the Grand Ole Opry? I have not been yet. It's actually been played on the Grand Ole Opry four times now, I believe, and I have not been there to see it played yet. So the people that are playing on the on the Grand Ole Opry, uh, studio musicians, or maybe somebody we've heard of, I don't know, but what do they say to you about the good, what do they, what's the conversation like? Oh, the, the conversation is really generally very interesting. 
the one young man that plays on the has played on the Grand Ole Opry is actually from Kansas. And I met this young man when he was 14 or 15 years old. And we started talking about resonator guitars. And I, there was an incident where I had one that I built for myself that he really liked. And he ended up buying that one. And then he called me quite often just discussing his ideas for a different guitar. So we built him another one, and he liked that really well, but he had more ideas. So I built him another one to his specs, and he liked that one really well and played it for years. And then I had built one, once again, for myself that was just absolutely beautiful, what they call quilted maple. It looks, the grain of the wood looks like uh, flowing water or maybe the clouds in the sky. And that young man just fell in love with that guitar, so he bought that one now. So <laughs> he actually owns four of them that I built for him. And he's probably telling stories to he, everybody, he too. He about... tells stories to everybody. And most of, the, most of the people that I build guitars for, whether they're professional musicians or amateurs, I spend a lot of time talking to them just to try to understand what they are looking for. What kind of sound they're looking for? What, what kind, kind of, of looks like? Both. What kind of sound they're looking for? What kind of a look they're looking for? I've been building these resonator guitars have a metal cover plate over the top, over that speaker cone thing. And I've been building a lot of them with colored. They're normally always chrome plated. But I've been having a lot of them coated, which is a ceramic coating like they put on gun barrels and stuff. And a lot of people like dark colors in that metal, black or dark, dark gray. I just recently had one coated in what they call a color changing color. And it's black until the light hits it from a certain direction, then it changes color. It turns to blue, it turns to green. It's really going to be neat. So how long does it take you to build one? Well, I've got it calculated to where it takes me about 55 hours to build one. And 55 hours in my guitar building world turns out to be about four months. Wow. Just, just because I work full time and I have 14 grandchildren nine of whom live in either Melcher or Knoxville. And I try to spend as much time with my grandchildren as I possibly can. Well, good for you. Now, I don't know if you want to share this or not, but what's one of these costs? Thousands of dollars. My, my guitars, I've been charging $1,800 for. For a, for a resonator guitar, simply because they're, the parts that I have to buy are more expensive for that, and there's more parts to it than a regular acoustic guitar. I've been selling regular acoustic guitars for $600, which in the custom-made guitar world is very, very cheap. So it's a labor of love. It is. It's not for the money. I calculated my labor that I got paid for the last guitar that I sold and I made $2.35 an hour. But it was fun, it was enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It's what I do to relax. And it brings joy. Yes. To the musician and to the listeners and, all over. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a really neat thing. I know a gentleman who plays the resonator guitar semi-professionally. He's a farmer in Nebraska and him and his wife were away from home and there was a wildfire that burnt down their house and burnt all their buildings and they lost absolutely everything. He lost all of his guitars and he had borrowed a guitar off of someone and was playing a show in Northern Iowa and I drove up there and 
gave him to use as long as he wants a resonator guitar because he's also a resonator guitar player. And I thought it made him incredibly happy. And I thought, man, that is really neat. I made this guy so happy that he actually had tears in his eyes. I thought that was just the neatest thing in the world. And I've heard from probably a hundred people that enjoy listening to him, how much they enjoy being able to hear him play the, the resonator guitar again. So it's, it has a ripple effect. It's been really, really, really neat.